So here's the thing. When most people need to plug more stuff into the wall, the solution is usually easy. You go to your local store, you spend 5 to 20 bucks on a power strip, you come home, you plug everything into it, and then away you go. You don't have to worry about anything else. But that's not always the case if you're an audiophile because there are many audiophiles out there who want to make sure that their system is as good as it could possibly be. And that means paying attention to things like the kind of power that's being fed to your electronics. And there are numerous solutions out there for those kind of individuals. And what I want to do today is I want to have a little bit of fun by seeing if I can reliably tell the difference between my system plugged into something like this a regular power strip that you can get at any hardware store, and something like this. An audiophile solution that's designed to make sure that your gear has access to the cleanest power possible. Now this unit I believe retails for around $160 to $180. Seems to be pretty well built, but the question of course is, does it make a difference? And if it does make a difference, is it good? Is it bad? I don't really know, but the fun of this video is I want to take you guys on the journey with me because I actually haven't listened to this stuff through my system yet, so I have no idea what I'm really going into here. Now to be clear, this is not going to be a scientific video. There's going to be no measurements, no blind tests or anything like that. I'm just going to rely on my honest ability to say, yep, I can hear a difference or no, I can't. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you to the methodology and show you how I'm going to go about this evaluation. I'm going to do some listening and then after that I'm going to sit back down here to give you my live raw thoughts on the matter. So let's get right to it. Alright guys, so whenever you're doing something as ridiculous as this, it's important to use variables that you're familiar with. And this case is going to be gear and music. Now, for this test I'll be relying on the AMR777 integrated amplifier with the AMR777 CD player. The Totem Acoustic Skies are going to be taking the honors today. Uh, they're not the most resolute speakers on planet Earth, but I know them well enough to know that if there are any changes, I'll likely be able to pick up on it. I have the gear connected to the wall, and that'll be compared to how the gear sounds on our El Cheapo power strip, and then how it sounds on our audiophile power strip. And I'm going to make sure it's not compromised. I'm going to plug it in using this nice thick Pangea power cord. That way everything is as good as I can make it. The music is going to be a mix of real world and audiophile stuff. We have Incubus and Vason, Kings of Convenience, Kill Switch Engage, White Snake, Starkers in Tokyo, really good album, and 2V1G, kind of more your sappy audiophile album, but I nonetheless like it. Now, methodology is going to be real simple. I'm going to listen to the system with everything plugged into the wall, get familiar with that. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to switch to this power strip, then we'll do some listening, see if I can tell a difference, and then we're going to wrap things up with the audiophile power strip and then return everything back to stock. No scientificness going on because I'll never be able to convince somebody to uh, come over and blindfold me for this really boring test. You're just going to have to rely on my ability to be honest with myself. So, anyways, let's get right to it. All right. Goodbye, power cords. Goodbye, power cords. Um... We're going to start off with our little cheapo now, with the longest power cord on freaking planet Earth, man. What the hell? All right. You know what? Why don't I just cut this? Because this is just going to be a disaster. All right, guys. So I just wrapped up the first listening session, and it pretty much went as expected. So now let me plug in the audiophile power strip. All right, everyone, I just wanted to show you that the Mistral Audio power strip is plugged in, so now let's get some listening done. <laughs> Alright guys, so I just finished listening to this system through the Mistral Audio Power Strip, which means it's now time for me to go into the other room, sit down, and to wrap up my thoughts about this entire experience. So, I'll see you in a few seconds. <sighs> okay. So I just wrapped up the entire listening session. I just turned on the camera, and this is gonna be my live, raw reaction to what I just experienced. And first and foremost, man, what happened to my life to end up in this spot where I'm talking about power strips? It's just crazy. Anyways, here's the thing. I know that a lot of you clicked on this video with your own immediate thoughts on how this is going to go down, right? We all have our bias. Some of you already concluded that this is just nonsense. Some of you are genuinely interested and some of you are all on board with audiophile power strip solutions. Let me tell you about my bias. I came into this honestly thinking that I was going to sit down and tell you all 
plug your gear into the wall for best sound and if you want to get a power strip then pick one that looks pretty and fits your budget boom bang done and i say that because i've actually listened to quite a few solutions right quite a few power conditioners power strips power regenerators and i've never really been a big fan because in my opinion they usually make everything sound worse in fact, probably the best power strip solution I've heard was from a company called Richard Gray. And it's not that it made anything sound better, it just didn't make anything sound worse. And to me, that's the best that a power strip can be. It doesn't take anything away, it doesn't add anything, you just get more outlets. Cool. That, to me, is awesome. Granted, it's an expensive awesome, but it's still awesome. So, here's what happened. On one hand, it started off exactly as I thought it would. I listened to the gear plugged into the wall, sounds good. Listened to the gear plugged through the El Cheapo power strip, and honestly, at low volumes, didn't sound any different to me. Sounded exactly the same. Then I decided to crank the volume up a little bit, and that is when the cheap power strip revealed itself for what it is. The music sounded compressed, um, gritty, no dynamic range whatsoever. That $12,000 system suddenly sounded like it was maybe 500 bucks. Sounded like crap. I plugged everything back into the wall, listened at the same volume. What do you know? Sounds a lot better, a lot more open, a lot more free. Okay, so far this is in line with my typical experience. So then I plugged in the audiophile power strip, expecting things to more or less be the same. Only they weren't. I'm still wrapping my head around this, guys, but the raw truth is that the system, dare I say it, sounded better. And the first thing I noticed, and I'm telling you right now, all of you, even those of you who are hard at hearing, would have been able to detect this. The center image locked into place. Just absolutely right into place. Which makes me think I may have a phase issue. But nonetheless, I couldn't ignore that. I was like, holy shit. I wasn't getting that before I plugged everything into the power conditioner or power strip. So, okay, that's, that's a first for me. But maybe it's an issue with the gear, maybe there's something else going on in the line, whatever. But another thing I noticed, and I admit, I don't know if I would take the Pepsi challenge for this, but I swear that the sound was a little bit cleaner. That cymbals had a little bit more shimmer to it, that the music just seemed to breathe a little bit easier through this Mistral power strip. And I sat there in disbelief, quite honestly. It's the first time I've ever encountered anything positive from a power strip. I actually immediately turned everything off, plugged everything back into the wall, sat back down thinking, there's going to be no difference. It's all in my head. I sat down and I was like, shit, okay. Imaging is diffuse again, and it, I swear it just doesn't sound as clean. Plug everything back into the power strip, everything was restored. <laughs> and I, just out of desperation, plugged everything back into the El Cheapo power strip. I'm like, come on, come on, man. This, this is stupid. This has got to be like all in the head, right? Sure enough, I ran into the same exact situation. It sounded like crap. So at that point, I finally decided to end the test. And what's going to happen is I'm going to keep revisiting this because let's face it, I mean, I, the results may be different across different situations. Maybe a more powerful amplifier is going to reveal a weakness that the AMR isn't. Maybe a different set of speakers are going to reveal something that the totem skies aren't. There could be a whole bunch of things going on, but what I can say and I promise I'd take you on this journey, whether you want to hear this or not. But what I can say is plug into the wall. It's still something I'd recommend. The cheap power strips sound like cheap power strips. And this is the first time to where I can say an audiophile solution doesn't sound bad. In fact, it actually sounds kind of good. In fact, it's not even that expensive, relatively speaking. And it's Chinese. I feel like this video is just going to get so much hate and that's okay because I'm not here to validate anybody's bias to even include my own. I told you I would take you on a journey. This is where it's led so far. So I'm not done with this situation. Even if I post nothing about it on Zero Fidelity, I'm still going to explore this to see what's going on here. But um, that's my honest raw take on this experience. So uh, yeah. If you've made it this far, guys, thank you for watching. And as always, enjoy the music. And until next time, peace.